And so I want to take a look at the reading from the book of Acts this morning. You'll notice that Rebecca introduced it as the, um, as the Acts of the Apostles, which is the full title of the book. Although many people think it ought to be called the Acts of the Holy Spirit. And here's why. Verse 8. Then Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, said to them, rulers of the people and elders, Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, said to them, rulers of the people and elders. This happens a lot in the book of Acts. The Holy Spirit fills people at critical times. Really, I think it's at those times that we tap into the power of the Holy Spirit that's already within us, but I'll talk about that more in a minute. The Holy Spirit drives the action of the story, just as the Holy Spirit drove the actions of the early church and ultimately must drive the actions of the church today. We need to rely on the Holy Spirit. We need to take direction from the Holy Spirit. We need to trust the Holy Spirit. We need to, to speak when the Holy Spirit prompts us to speak, both as individuals and as a congregation, we need to rely on the Holy Spirit, particularly when we're in crisis. Peter and John were in crisis. They were in a lot of trouble. They had put themselves at odds with the religious and political leaders of Israel. Now, I don't know about you, but if I were in that situation, I might just say, I'm sorry, pay the fine, be on my way. Maybe that's what Peter was thinking. But the Holy Spirit had other plans. The Holy Spirit wasn't about to let this moment pass without proclaiming the good news, having the good news proclaimed. And Peter was going to be the mouthpiece. Here's how it reads in the scriptures. It says, if we are questioned today because of a good deed done to someone who is sick, and are asked how this man has been healed, let it be known to all of you and to all the people of Israel that, it, that this man is standing before you in good health by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Now, sometimes it works that way. Sometimes the Holy Spirit empowers us unprovoked and uninvited because not, God needs us to do something. God needs us to be the mouthpiece, the mouthpiece that proclaims the healing power of Jesus, the mouthpiece that pushes back against the powers of this world and the status quo. And sometimes the Holy Spirit empowers us because we ask, because we recognize that we need God's help or God's, God needs our help. I think the baptismal covenant is a, is a great reminder of that, that, that phrase that we answer those questions with, I will with God's help. That phrase, that, that answer reminds us that the Holy Spirit stands ready, ready and willing. The early church didn't grow as quickly as it did because it was timid or because they pushed the status quo. The early church grew because it pushed against the status quo. They had a brand new message. It was an important message. It's still important today. And they proclaimed it boldly, empowered by the Holy Spirit, the message that Jesus saves. Verse 12, there is salvation in no one else. For there is no other name under heaven given among mortals by which we must be saved. Far from the exclusionary statement that it's often taken for and often used for, this is an invitation. An invitation to a new life. A new life following Jesus' command to love God and to love our neighbor as ourselves a new life that acts as an agent, an agent of healing in the name and, and by the name of Jesus. And more than that, it's an invitation to a new life with Jesus. 
a new life filled with the power of the Holy Spirit. But here's the thing. We often think that we're filled with the Holy Spirit just periodically, that the Holy Spirit comes to us at certain times. And this is what I was alluding to earlier. Because I believe that we're filled with the Holy Spirit every single moment of every single day, whether we feel the Holy Spirit or not. We are filled with the Holy Spirit at our baptism, and the Holy Spirit never, ever, ever goes away. Oh, the presence and, and of God, the power of God working in us and through us never goes away. And it's through this power and presence that we know Jesus. We can know Jesus in a personal way. And we don't always pay attention. And we're often distracted. We sometimes even take credit for the work of the Holy, that the Holy Spirit does through us. And some of us run from the Holy Spirit, from the presence of God in our lives. We don't always recognize the healing power of Jesus, but when we do, we need to proclaim it. Just as Peter proclaimed it, relying on the Holy Spirit. We should share that healing power through prayer and the laying on of hands. We should share it through comforting words and inviting people to be a part of this community. And we should never, ever be afraid of it. We should never be afraid to speak of the healing power of Jesus. There is real power in the name of Jesus. God really is present in our lives. The Holy Spirit really does fill us and dwell in us. And we need to claim that. And then we need to proclaim that. Amen.